Hello my soccer universe. It is time to talk about a big anniversary, at least in Austrian soccer, probably also in Spanish soccer. I mean, it is not often that you put nine goals past an opponent that was at that moment considered to be your closest rival in the qualification. The year is 1999, um, 27th of March. Austria is about to play uh, Spain in a uh, Euro qualifier. And you know, Austria's history in Euro qualifiers is a very um, crazy one. Uh, some of our worst losses, Ferry Islands 1990, came in Euro qualifying. But nothing seemed like uh, something bad was coming. Quite the opposite. Ahead of the group, Spain, coming off a very disappointing World, World Cup, lost 3-2 in Cyprus. Uh, then got some point, uh, some um, results, um, but you know, they seem to be the team in trouble at that stage. Um, on the other hand, Austria, right after World Cup, played a credible 2-2 draw in a friendly against France took Cyprus seriously and was sitting at 7 points, Cyprus actually having 9 points at this stage. Uh, in addition, I, re I remember Austria playing uh, friendly in Switzerland, uh, where they won in St. Garden quite easily 4-2. So confidence on the Austrian side was really, really high and, uh, and you always thought, yeah, it might be possible to get a result in Spain. It was even down that our uh, coach, Herbert Prohaska, said, you know, if we win in Valencia, my uh, moustache is coming off. And this was his trademark back then. Meanwhile, he has lost it. Uh, he is now a commentator for the Austrian television. Um, but yeah, that was the situation. Really, Austria, I don't want to say overconfident, but you know, quite assured in themselves. Actually, also making a slight rebuild because you know the squad that qualified for France '98 was getting up there in age, and you know the World Cup was not all that great for us. But no one really um, was too sad about it either. I mean, you knew that in a group with Italy, Chile, and Kakamura, Kaka, it was going to be a fight, and you were always in there until the last second to maybe even get um, get there but you know in the, in, in the end it didn't pan out anyway uh, also ahead of the game everyone said oh we need to be very careful with Spain uh, especially on the wings that's where we need to be very 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 careful so uh, the crazy thing that was set up is um, we had Jose Antonio Camacho taking over for Spain and Spain actually playing in a, what is now considered or was then considered a modern formation uh, kind of a 4-4-2 you no know, four at the back uh, then the midfield two with um, Guardiola and Valeron and Guardiola most importantly was not playing at the World Cup so uh, always have that in mind. Those two in the middle and we know what player Guardiola was. The player that the coach Guardiola loves the most. The defensive midfielder that's kind of orchestrating the entire attack. That's the type of player that Guardiola was. And through the Austrian focus, not only of playing with three at the back with one free man, the Libero, which was a system from the 80s, uh, but also man-to-man -man defending. The whole setup is that we had the two defenders uh, doubling Raul and Ursais, uh, the, the players on uh, the, the attacking players. Sorry, I had to look for the lights. It was kind of weird. Kind of weird. Uh, and then the midfield um, also really our wingers trying to double the Spanish wingers, which means acres of space for Guardiola. I think he must have had uh, the time of his life. And now with this man-to-man -man defending, which was the standard in Austria, and uh, if you look in the uh, at, at, at the group stage, I mean, this three at the back was still kind of the prevalent choice 
uh, well, you know, half of the, of the teams were playing in that uh, style with the group, Austria's World Cup group, actually being the last group where all teams played that system. So with the man-to-man -man defending and Guardiola in the middle, Guardiola and Valeron being absolutely free, having a field thing. And so all it needed was a few dummy runs. I mean, the first goal, Guardiola passes to uh, Raul, who lays it off to Ursaiz, just makes a quick dummy run. Not well defended as well. And 1-0 after five minutes. A few minutes later, very, sim very, 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 very similar, where just the wingers pulled Austria's uh, team completely out of uh, out Austria because they are man-to-man -man marking, uh, making acres of space, which forces the Libero Feiersinger, who actually up and was a great player for Austria, uh, puts him also out of position, and again Raúl finds acres of space, makes it 2-0. Uh, Urs, 2-0, uh, which I think was funny because they, I think it hit the post and then uh, Austrian defenders standing there comically to the nth degree. Uh, Ursaiz makes them a great goal to make it 3-0. I think it was a penalty in there. It's 5-0 at halftime. Now, what most Austrians will remember is not the 5-0 necessarily, or the, or the end, end result, the most for the Austrian uh, folklore. The most uh, striking was happening in the halftime interview, where the uh, interviewer asked the Austrian defender, how could this happen? And he said, well, we are too far off the man and again, man-to-man -man marking, not thinking that, you know, you're completely uh, technically outclassed. Uh, no. Is they will need to be closer to the man, and then he's asking, So, what can 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 you do in the second half? I mean, it's 5 0. And his response was, Well, we're not gonna win it by a lot today. And this comment is probably one of the most poignant uh, remarks ever made by a soccer player in Austria. I mean, that ended into folklore. Um, you know, he said it that pan, and of course, with a lot of uh, self irony, self deprecation. And yeah, that's what I think most people took away from it. Um, then it was then quickly 6-0 and then Mendieta made his debut for uh, Spain, which got Spain even more and in the end it's 9-0 for Spain, which, you know, at that point most Austrian fans, at, I think at 5-0 we were still a little bit dev devastated, but if you kept on watching, you actually had fun seeing Spain scoring. And nine is kind of a magic number because the Austrian uh, kind of bowling, we call it kegging, uses nine pins. And so uh, we said, yeah, all nine. We have the perfect kegging result. Uh, nine nil, and it's still remembered as the kegging night of Valencia here. Absolute disaster. Now, what's even more remarkable, you were shown how modern soccer works and the reaction nothing absolutely nothing it was even done that the president didn't want to fire the coach the coach stepped down himself uh, because of public pressure you could not hold him up anymore uh, the new coach came in Baric uh, who was super successful in Austria he is the coach that got rapid in 1985 to the European Champions Cup final in 94 even more remarkable Salzburg to the UEFA Cup final um, he was more or less a, a Croatian co uh, coach, and I think he coached Croatia at the 2004 Euros, uh, who had a huge amount of credit in Austria. Uh, he was considered basically uh, at least the second best coach in Austria at the time. But the problem was that he also had the same antiquated tactics. Um, Austria at that moment was influenced on the coaching sector by two main nations, Germany and the Balkans. And if you look at it from a technical point, 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 point of view, those were the nations that were still using this liberal system, the ant antiquated one, and all three nations were about to hit really a rough spot.
in their uh, fortunes. So it took uh, Austria a whole lot of time to actually get to the point where you say, uh, yeah, we need to go back to, uh, we need to go with four at the back. That did not happen until very, very late. The, The system itself had already been introduced in the Austrian League, but by, I'm proud to say, by Lask, who hired a coach, uh, Per Brogelan from Norway, who played with four at the back, which was unheard of in Austria. This is not how you play. And I don't want to say he was super successful, but this was the most fun uh, up until recent to watch Lask because they were playing offensively. Yes, since they didn't really know how to, how, to, how to play with four at the back, it took them some time to get adjusted to it, and so we also leaked a lot of goals. And then because the Austria, uh, the Lask president wanted to really hire Brogelan, uh, Baric, that was the reason why Brogelan got fired, which most Lask fans actually really regretted because we were all kind of certain that this was going some places. And he actually was fired after 5 0 win over Rapid. Then there was another coach uh, from Germany, I think Wolfgang Frank, who for Austria win did uh, four at the back and he thoroughly failed. Uh, this was not uh, good. So you could all, all the things that you could see in Austria was, yeah, four at the back, that's not for us. Um, and even in the discussions, when Proask is out, who should we get uh, the now? president of the Austrian Football Federation, to his credit, uh, said, well, Roy Hodgson had a lot of success with Switzerland. Why wouldn't we get Hodgson? He was, of course, overvoted because Baric, 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 and from that on, the fall of Austrian soccer began. When did it get better? Well, when actually the current Austrian president took over with the sporting director, who actually was really into modern football, the first hire was kind of a consolation hire, which did not pan out. And then they hired Marcel Koller, a Swiss guy, who modernized the game. And now it's even more galling that because of him uh, not having then the success after the Euro 2016, which was probably mishandled by the Austrian Federation, uh, that we hired now again a coach with some questionable tactics pulling us away. So the guy who actually was in 20 years ago wanting to go for the, for the innovation actually made the innovation. Um, but then when his power was in question, let it all fall apart. He let it all fall apart. And I'm afraid we repeat the cycle after having some success with something that we're not, the Austrian Federation is not far set enough. Where did he go from here? Yeah, Austria uh, completely fell apart, of, 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 which is also weird. Yes, 9-0 is never pretty, but then, you know, you lost 5-0 to Israel. Hal, hello. Now we lost 4-2 to Israel. And from that moment on, uh, all confidence was shot. Um, Baric made it into the qualifying campaign uh, for the 2002 World Cup, into the playoffs uh, with a famous goal in Israel. We had almost the same group again. Twice in a row we played Spain and Israel. Only the other two teams were uh, switched. Um, but Turkey outclassed us as well. Baric could not be held anymore. And then the Hans Krankel took over, which was an unmitigated disaster. Uh, only thereafter there was maybe some slides, you know, with Euro 2008 coming. But it didn't get better until 2012 gotta be said and yeah that's where it is what was for spain spain qualified ahead of on top of the group despite this loss to cyprus uh had a really exciting euro where they were eliminated by then world champions um france who went on to win it camacho had a great showing at the 2002 world cup spain got cheated i think spain should have made at least the semi-finals they would probably have if they would have gotten the semi-finals they would have beaten germany i'm absolutely convinced of that uh they would have made the final against brazil uh after camacho 
I think he was fired after I don't know, oh, maybe he's he stepped down after the World Cup because there was Saez who was then coaching that had the Saez in 2004 and then Aragones took over and from 2006 on Spain was flying 2005 2006 on Spain was flying well a little look back and it tells you a lot about Austria this 9-0 and I'm wearing the Spain shirt this is 2006 but there's the number 27 here 27th of March which is actually my lucky number but when I was reminded that this is the same uh, this is also it refers to the date this for me is my Valencia shirt but I have other nice stories with that I probably have made I haven't made a video about this shirt I'll link it up there well let me know if you knew about this 9 nil whether uh, and whether this was interesting to you this little look back uh, I really had to do this for the day give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it uh, let me know in the comments what if your nation has had a similar result and yeah subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these or any others and I'll talk to you soon bye hey there I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too also please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel all things my soccer universe and with that i want to wish you a wonderful day